guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are back with yet another Lulu's Customs and Classics release, and as you can see, this time we've got ourselves two different versions of the Ultimasaurus. This is the juvenile version of the Ultimasaurus, which I have actually reviewed one of in the past, however, we now have two more variants of this dinosaur, of this crazy, crazy hybrid now out on the market from Lulu's Customs and Classics. And honestly, these things just seem to get better and better. I don't know which one I would say is my favorite, but I definitely will say I love that roaring version over there. You can see we basically have like the Night Hunter version, but we've also got this really cool bluish version, which is like an alternate version of like a Night Hunter. I don't know if there's any reason behind that one and the bluish tones, but I will say I absolutely love it with the bluish coloration on it. But again, as you can see, just two different really cool variants, two different versions, new sculpted versions of the Ultimasaurus, the juvenile version from Lulu's Customs and Classics. So as always, let's jump to a closer look and check both of them out right now. So we will begin with this version, which obviously has that Night Hunter theme to it. And it looks really cool with this roaring sort of a pose that this one has. Definitely giving off a very ferocious look and feel for the Ultimasaurus in this pose. Again, with that mouth wide open, the teeth showing, and just generally the very angry appearance that we've got going on for it. Obviously, we've got a black for the upper part of the head. We've got a really beautiful purple that perfectly matches that Night Hunter tone right there for the lower jaw. You can see the eyes are painted with a white. You've got the spike here on the side of the head painted with a white. And the horns up here on the top of the head also painted with not even really a white. They're actually more of like an off-white. All of those are more of like an off-white. But the detailing looks great. Again, he's definitely captured with this version as well the appearance of what I would expect a juvenile version of this crazy hybrid dinosaur to look like. We've got the inside of the mouth painted with some purplish tones the tongue again sculpted there on the inside of the mouth you can see the teeth on the lower jaw are sculpted really nicely painted really nicely same deal for the teeth on the upper jaw as well again definitely very nicely done you can see the skin stretching there as the dinosaur has its mouth very much so wide open as we move back here you start to see kind of like a little bit of an armored sort of a look picking up in the back of the neck of the dinosaur you can see the purplish tones also kind of blending with some blackish tones in here as well and then as you lead to the underside, you have the orangish tones as well. So as you move up here, you again have that classic armored look for the dinosaur. Because if you are unfamiliar with the Ultimasaurus, it is basically a mashup of numerous different dinosaurs. So you'll see traits of all sorts of different dinosaurs in this one hybrid as you move through. Again, we do have a black for the armored area as you move down here. You can see more of the purples and blacks kind of shining through, especially as you look right there where the rib cage is displayed. You can see the purples and blacks kind of trading places. And very nice muscle definition in the arms as well. And then as you lead down, you can see the fingers, the super long, creepy fingers of our Ultimasaurus. The nails again painted with that same tone that we saw for the eyes and the horns. The... Uh, Dinosaur itself would look super cool in any type of a film or show. Like, I would love to see this show up in a future Camp Cretaceous type show because I really don't think they'd make it for a movie, maybe. But I feel like having it in some sort of a Camp Cretaceous type of a show would honestly be awesome just to see the Ultimasaurus get some sort of screen time at some point. But as you move down through the body, you can see the muscle definition again in both the thigh, the calf, the knee right there is displayed in the front of the leg. You can even see, again, variation of color when it comes to the purplish tones. Looks like maybe we have, uh, it kind of looks like darker and lighter shades of purple, but I'm not positive on that, but I can definitely see the blacks creeping through there as well. But as you lead down into the foot sculpt, again, you've got a really nice foot sculpt. You've got the nails sculpted out again, painted with that same tone of color, same deal for the opposing side, which you can see the dew claw now. Looking at it from this side, this foot is planted as the dinosaur is taking a step forward, and then we lead out here into the tail. Again, we have the armored look running all the way out to that very cool club tail, but as you can see, since this is a juvenile, those spikes that you see on the end of the tail have not grown in quite yet for our Ultimasaurus, but you also have that orangish tone 
moving along the underside. Of course, you see pretty much the same thing from the opposing side. The dinosaur's pretty much straightforward the entire way through. The only real difference on this side would be the fact that the leg is trailing, whereas the leg is leading on the other side. You can see the toes picking up and lifting off of the ground, showing that walking movement. And you also have the JP stamp over here, which I absolutely love because nothing screams classic Jurassic more than a JP stamp. So definitely an awesome figure. And then we've also also got this version which as you can see the head and everything has a very different look to it compared to what we saw in the other one the mouth is closed on this one first of all and I really like the pose of the head and neck of this one there's just something that looks really cool about the way that it's posed I also kind of like this little lump in the throat right here it just has such a very appealing look to it it also looks incredibly mischievous like it really does look like it's up to something here you can see the teeth are sculpted out here on the closed mouth version you can see them resting on the lower jaw you can also see of course that they are painted we have the black for the upper side the white again for the horns more of like a white on this one rather than the off-white like we saw in the other one and then you have the really nice bluish tones for the lower part of the body and then of course making it up here into the upper side of the neck but you can see again the blacks just like we saw on the other version but on the underside instead of the uh, orangish tones that we had on the other one we have more of like a tan for this version as you move back you can see the arms are just like the other one basically sitting in the same spot here you know uh, held together very nice and you know naturally I guess for something that's very unnatural and uh, as you continue to move through a large portion of the figure feels like it is pretty close to the same as the other one you know the legs are looking like they're basically mirrored as far as the positioning goes again we've got that beautiful JP stamp they'll love that so much but you can see again that we've got all of the muscle definition displayed we continue to kind of uh, include the blue and blackish tones popping up here and there which is something that you often see when it comes to Lulu's paintwork. I love the way he paints his figures. And then as you lead out the rest of the way here of the figure, you can see again that it pretty much follows the same trend as the other one, especially as far as the paintwork goes, just replacing the purple with blue and the orangish tones with kind of a tan. But again, you can get a better look at the super cool tag that we have here again for Lulu's Customs and Classics. Awesome artwork that he has on there as well with a thumbs up. I love that. Definitely keeping that on the dinosaur. And again, you can see what it looks like from this side. Absolutely phenomenal yet again. It's so insanely cool to have a you know, uh, Juvenile Ultimasaurus. And now not only do I have a Juvenile Ultimasaurus, but clearly I've got a couple of them. Another thing that's really fun about these guys is there is actually a card for these as well. You can see stocking Juvenile Ultimasaurus, and you can see stronger when hunting in packs. Again, we've got the Lulu's Customs and Classics logo right there. And then here on the back, you again have some more information on basically the uh, dinosaur and the fact that they created a very cool hybrid very nice glossy finish for the card as well and what else is cool is i not only have these ultimasaurus but i've also got the very first version that i had reviewed from lulu's customs and classics so as you can see i now have an entire family basically of ultimasaurus of juvenile ultimasaurus including an adult as well but uh this does help to give you an idea of the size i don't really feel like we need to measure these guys or anything because as you can see they're very similar pretty much the same size almost maybe the middle one looks like it might be slightly smaller but as the original version that i had already reviewed so if you've seen that review you'll already have a pretty good idea of the size and you can see again they all look incredibly incredibly cool next to each other again giving me an entire family of ultimasaurus now what is also cool about this ultimasaurus is the fact that lulu has given it a variation of glow in the dark paint so hypothetically this dinosaur should glow when we turn the lights off i don't know how much it'll glow and i don't know how much my camera will pick it up but we're going to go ahead and give it a try anyway so let me go ahead and stand it in front of the light here for a few moments and then we'll dim the lights and check it out so there you go you can now see the different areas of the dinosaur and how they are glowing look at how crazy cool 
that is that head is so creepy and man does that ever glow i was not prepared for it to glow as much as it does you can even see the jp stamp itself glows which is also crazy cool so it seems as though that off-white coloration that he was using is basically what is the glow in the dark part of the dinosaur you can see the toenails and the claws and everything are all glowing on the figure i feel like i probably could have shined the light on the toenails a little bit more but i was basically aiming for up here if you held it in front of a very powerful light i can't even begin to imagine if everything was glowing perfectly how cool this would look so Lulu's Customs and Classics yet again has pulled off another fantastic release. And this time we've got two Ultimasaurus with two different color schemes. And the fact that I have the Night Hunter version previously and now have another Night Hunter version as well as another version that looks like it's the Night Hunter-ish style but different tones of color, I think really helps to make this look like a family like something you often see in different animals today where you'll have like especially if you look at like ducks and stuff you'll sometimes see a whole bunch of ducklings and stuff that are all the same type of color and then you'll have like one or two oddballs that are slightly different in their coloration and stuff you see that quite often and we see that same thing here again for our ultimasaurus and i love that i love the entire idea behind it but yet again he's created some more insanely cool juvenile ultimasaurus the sculpts on these look absolutely fantastic he continues to give them that sort of stalking pose where they look like they are absolutely coming to uh, cause some mayhem. They look very mischievous and they look very evil at the same time. So I really like the fact that they are continuously posed in that way. And now having all three of them here and being able to display them together makes it look like all three of them are on the move. They're all on the hunt while still looking, you know, similar but different, especially when it comes to the different head sculpts and the positioning of the body and stuff. It just looks crazy, crazy cool on these figures. And again, the fact that not only are they sculpted beautifully, but they're painted beautifully really helps to, again, amp up the awesomeness, the awesome factor of these figures. And just generally the fact that they are Ultimasaurus is incredible incredibly incredibly cool but i also love the fact that you've got a glow in the dark aspect to the ultimasaurus here that is crazy cool something that again when you have so many different things going into one creature i wouldn't be surprised if it had some sort of a uh, bioluminescence or something to it especially considering we already do see that in the camp cretaceous parasaurolophus so maybe our ultimasaurus has that going on again as well but overall these are awesome cannot stress enough how insanely cool these figures are so if you are interested in grabbing some of these and adding them to your collection i highly recommend that you do again whether you grab one or all three you're making a great decision and i love the fact that not only has he given them again that same stocking pose i didn't mention this before but i also like that he's altered the positioning of the tail and everything for like the one having its tail up higher the other one's having their tail down lower it's just there's little tiny subtle differences that he's done to these figures to make them look insanely cool especially when all displayed together so again if you are interested make sure you check the links that i will include in the description to go head on over to the ebay shop of lulu's customs and classics and grab Grab these ultimate source for yourself and of course like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching